This video is to show you how to turn off the TPMS light on your dash on a 2008 Toyota Avalon Limited, but will apply probably to most uh, model Toyotas uh, in that time frame and Lexuses uh, of all types and sizes and flavors of cars, probably most all of them. Anyways, my point is this, uh, if you do this, it'll be able to turn off the uh, dash light for your TPMS, but it will also totally disable all functions of your TPMS. So in other words, you won't be able to tell if your tire pressure is off or not. So in other words, proceed at your own risk. I have no responsibility if you happen to execute this procedure. Shooting a quick video to show you what I'm going to do uh, with my TPMS that uh, tire shops will tell you have gone bad. Really what's happened is the batteries run out in them, essentially forcing you to uh, pay an extra, I don't know, 200 to $300 every 10-ish years when the batteries run out and you have to replace them. Or if you change rims, I guess sometimes you have to uh, replace these or something. I don't know. Anyways, this is what my solution is to getting out of having to pay that every 10 years. When one goes out, usually the other ones are not far behind because it's the same battery put in at the same time. Uh, this has a, comes with a black, this is for a Toyota and most other Toyota models and probably a lot of other cars. I don't know. I can't speak to the other cars. But this, is, this is out of a 2008 Toyota Avalon. This is the TPMS. Um, it comes out of your car uh, wheels, basically. It's got a black cover over all these. This is soft silicone. There's a battery in here. You pry it up with a real small jeweler's screwdriver. These are leads that go to the battery. Um, you want to make sure you cut the leads off as far as you can towards the battery. You don't want to have to mess with uh, resoldering onto the actual board here. Then basically, you solder wires, um, uh, and you can run them all off the same two AA batteries. That's what I have over here, AA batteries. I guess I should have opened that up. This is a little, you, this is sort of fancy. You don't have to have one of these containers, and you can figure out another way to do it. But anyways, there's the AA batteries there. Um, so you can run them all off the same AA battery, and that, if my calculations are correct, uh, a button battery that you would put in here last 10 years, but you can run all these off of two double A's for over roughly twice as long or 20 years, if my calculations are correct. You wire them all together. All the positives go to the positive here. Um, the positive is the one that's closest to the stem on my 2008 Toyota Avalon. I'll take a close-up of the back of this just so you have an idea of uh, which one we're talking about. Right there. That's what it is. There's one in your spare also. Um, you wire them all up to this. You make sure the power is turned on. Um, I'll include pictures of this later, but then you, I'm going to... Um, test this before I put it in the tube. I'm going to take it over to my tire guy and have him make sure they're all working before I seal them in. Um, this is just heat shrink that I haven't shrunk down. Um, you could use electrical tape or whatever. Uh, this stuff right here. Heat shrink. Uh, I can't see it, I guess. Here you go. That's unshrunken heat shrink because I'm making sure my connections are good first. Uh... And underneath that heat shrink is a connection to the lead uh, going into this device. Again, the one that's closest to the stem is the positive. The one that's the farthest away is the negative. Anyways, I'm going to make sure it all works. And after it all works, I'm probably going to tape these up really good with some electrical tape so you can't yank out the wires on accident. Um, or um, You need to cover these up so they don't short against each other uh, while they're in the tube. And then I'm going to uh, wrap them in some um, fibrous material so they don't bounce around and then seal them into a PVC tube. I'll show you a little bit more about that in a bit. 
two important points. Um, you can get a battery case like this off of eBay, but also for maximum life of this solution, make sure you use lithium AA batteries. Lithium AA batteries. Um, they last longer than anything else, and um, I think they might have resistance to heat as well. But anyways, lithium batteries, I used Energizer. I think uh, they're probably, it's, don't skimp on the batteries, because you're going to have to redo the project if you, if you do that. Um, that's it. Yeah, so just a few side notes that I didn't include in other portions of this video. Um, when you get the battery, when you pry it up out of here with a jeweler's screwdriver, You'll have these leads right here that you can see through. That's clear uh, heat shrink right there. You can see that lead. Anyways, the best thing that I found to clean those leads off, they'll have silicone on them, uh, is a brass brush on a little Dremel. Okay. Now, um, other notes. What you see here is... Um, I forgot and didn't really secure this, figure out any way to secure this to this in case it got yanked. So what I've done here is I've uh, basic over here on all these others, I've basically secured them by pushing this wire in, flipping it over, running it up the back of the unit, and then sealing it down with electrical tape so that it has something to grip onto. The electric tape and the wire so if it gets yanked it doesn't get yanked off those leads shouldn't be getting yanked anyways uh other notes um when i took this thing to make sure before i compress it uh, i took it over to a tire place and you sort of got to make sure you get a hold of somebody who's sort of buying into your concept because if you don't it gets a little confusing anyways I'm telling you to the best of my knowledge, I don't re even really know if it's accurate or not. I'm not sure if you could throw all these, um, after you repower them up with these double A's here in this case, um, uh, I'm not sure if you have to reprogram them or not. Initially, I got a hold of somebody who wasn't wise to really what I was doing, and he actually told me that two of these things weren't working. I was trying to get them to test to make sure that I didn't have any cold solders uh, before I sealed it into the tube. Um, but the guy basically said two of these don't work and I'm like what so then I took them back and I tested the voltage uh, How you make sure? Hopefully that they're gonna work as you test the voltage on those two leads the orange one on this the one closest to the stem is the positive they should read I Think it's 3.5 volts. You can google that. But anyways, it's DC voltage. So I had voltage to all of them so then I wondered, well, it doesn't need to be relearned. Long story short, I ended up taking it to a place that had them relearn it. Um, and that means basically the car relearns each and every one of these IDs. You have to have the power on. And after you do it, my understanding is you can't take the power off of them. Um, but I could be wrong. I don't know. So anyways, this power is on. And it's taped, the switch is taped to the on position so I don't accidentally turn it off. Um, so what I'm going to do after this, basically, is uh, take this PVC pipe, put an end on it, seal it up, um, put some fibrous material around here, sort of like um, stuff that's in seat cushions, um, the, the uh, white fluffy stuff, wrap it up, probably Ziploc two or three of these things together in lumps just make sure they don't rattle around once they're in this tube then i'm going to put uh, one end uh, on the tube uh that's just a normal uh tube end like this glue it on with pvc glue i think i gotta let it sit for a couple hours and then i'm going to put this on the other end uh and seal that down this talk to tire guy and to give me one of these for free i'm hoping i did it right um long another tip i think i got this from a different video i haven't tried the the stem yet so i don't know if it's in actually going to work or not but the end of this is very thick so you have to drill a real tight hole it'll give you this um you can probably look up on the internet i think it's 29 
60 seconds, I, th I think, but don't take my word for it. Look it up. Is an actual stem thing, but it's so thick that inside you sort of got to countersink sink it down so the stem comes out properly and can seal. I hope that I've done that. I've tried to do it, um, but I picked that up from another video. Uh, that's it for now. So, one other thing. I did not want to have to reopen this after I sealed in the TPMS. So, just to be absolutely sure, if you notice, you'll see down there, I put 100% silicone around the inside part of, uh, that, uh, of this right here. Uh, just to make sure. Also, the silicone I use at least says it can dry to the touch in 30 minutes, but to be fully cured, it takes about 24 hours. So, I'm going to leave this open for 24 hours so Eric can cure it. Uh, you might want to do the same. Other tip that I forgot. Uh, it, while you're having this, uh, well, if you have this relearned, if you decide that that's what you want to try to do, uh, again, I'm sort of guessing it at this uh, working, but uh, you'll see at the end of the video if it does or not, I guess. Um, while you're trying to, if you try to relearn this, don't hold all the sensors in front of the, the gun that they use, the, uh, what do they call it? The interface that they use um, that goes into the OBD2 port. When you, when you are relearning these, separate the one that you're relearning as far as you can and hold that in front of, have them hold that in front of the unit uh, that they're using to relearn. Don't have them pointing the unit to all the other ones because that's where I think a lot of problems is. As a matter of fact, if the unit, if this tape right here represents the unit that's that's setting this device uh, or relearning it, um, I think, oh, by the way, I think that's the antenna too. The stem is also the antenna. You should be holding these as far into the back of the unit as possible to the side. Um, that's where I found the best results in uh, actually getting the units, the uh, TPMSs to uh, be relearned to the vehicle. If you hold them in front, it just confuses them and they'll say things don't work or they'll pick up random ones or they'll duplicate them, all that stuff. Okay, this is just to give you an idea of that porous cushioning material that I recommended you put in uh, side just in case to deaden any rattling that may occur here this inside the tube. I'll show you what I got so far. I'm working on that. Um, but anyways, I got it in the end. Uh, mine's so small, I'm not going to be able to put much in. Um, I was lucky enough to have uh, a neighbor throw out a couch or chair or something, and I took the cushion off, and this was on top of the foam. So it has to be porous so the TPMS can be pressurized within the pipe uh, by the air. It can't be something that's like cellophane or anything like that. So what we have here is the entering the final stages what I've done is I cut circular foam inserts out I put one in the bottom just one in the bottom put in all of the electronics bunched them in there then so far I've put two of these on top I'm gonna to fit as many of these on top of as, as I can on this side um, and the rationale being if I have to cut this thing open I'll probably have to use a hole saw on the cap um, so I want to have more space on this side if I ever have to cut it open and then I'll just mark it on the outside which side to cut uh, at least that's a plan I don't know if it's a good one but that's the way it's gonna roll from here all right this is the finished project and I know it's not pretty no I'm not the best at my uh, cementing but anyways uh, long story short, make sure you push this down very fast as you twist it a quarter turn. I didn't push it down real fast. But anyways, um, I recommend you use a pump such as this instead of like an air compressor because such a small space is going to uh, get pressurized real fast. Anyways, as you can see, um, I'm going to put this up to about 32 and it appears that the pressure's holding. So that's a good thing. That's what we're shooting for. All right, so I'm in the car and I've reached the point of knock on wood being able to say I'm successful. And the reason I say that is the light was right here. It's been on for weeks and weeks and weeks. 
um, but the contraption seems to work. Now, what I had to do after I started the car, the light didn't go out right away. Um, you have to go underneath. I can't really show you the, uh, you have to go underneath the dash down here. Let's see if I can find it. See that button right there? That button right there. Um, my understanding is you push that until the light, uh, stops blinking or something like that. Anyways, long story short, I just messed with that button. Um, and I didn't think the light had gone out, but I think after you hold the button down till you see a change in the light state, um, you let it sit for, I don't know, 10 seconds, let go of the button and let it sit for like 10 seconds, then turn um, to put the car off for like a minute and then restart and that's when I realized that I'd finally, knock on wood, beat the yellow flashing TPMS button. So in summary, uh, mess with that reset button down there after you do everything else in this video uh, to get this button to go, this uh, light to go out and you should be good to go by my calculations for the next 20 years if you use the two AA lithium batteries inside the cylinder. And if you'd like to be really thorough before you bury this tube somewhere in your car, you can test for air leaks just by sinking it underwater for a little while and looking for bubbles. So I've decided that all of my TPS sensors are going to be living right down here next to the tire, hidden so I don't ever have to deal with this, hopefully ever have to deal with this problem again. Uh, only thing that may happen is this may rattle a bit going over bumps. And if so, just uh, put a towel around it. I think that would probably solve it.